Hi, this is the welcoming video for ethics. Welcome. I'm Rob Loftus. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm your instructor. There are actually two parallel sections for this course, one online and one in person. The Canvas page covers both the online and the in-person sections. This welcoming video, however, is mostly just for the online section. For the in-person students, we will be going over most of this material in the first class session. I'll talk more about the relationship between the two sections later in this video. Okay, first up, my contact information, which is on the Canvas page for this course. Email is the best way to contact me. You can use the Canvas system, or you can email me directly at jloftis at l-o-r-a-i-n-c-c-c dot edu. I generally reply within 24 hours and promise to reply within 48. You'll notice that although I go by the name Rob, my email says J Loftus. Um, and when you see me commenting online, my name will also appear as James. That's because uh, my full name is James Robert Loftus. And when I took this job 14 years ago, they just entered me in the system as James Loftus. And it's been that way ever since. But please call me Rob. Or if you don't feel comfortable calling your teachers by your first name, you can call me Professor Loftus. My office hours this semester are Tuesdays and Thursdays from noon to two. You can also set up an appointment anytime. I'm on campus Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we can always talk via um, uh, WebEx or Zoom. Um, I'm also including my cell phone number. Feel free to contact me. I work from home because of COVID, like everyone else, or like a lot of people. And um, uh, so contact me is not uh, on the cell is not a problem, but you should probably text first because I don't pick up for strange numbers like like most everyone, I'm getting too much spam to really uh, trust picking up for strange numbers. Okay, next I have a couple of announcements and some introductory comments about the course. And for this part, I'm going to be reusing old video recorded from previous semesters, so there will be some awkward jumps. If you have a disability and need an accommodation, you are legally entitled to one, thanks to the Americans with Disabilities Act. If you need an accommodation, you should talk with me confidentially early in the semester. You should also talk to the Office of Accessibility Services. The link to their webpage is in the PowerPoint. You can also visit them in person at the College Center, room 234 across from the Testing Center. You can call them at 440-366-4085 or email at accessibility at lorrainecc.edu. In general, the school offers an enormous number of support resources, both academic and personal, for students who need help for any reason at all. Most personal support resources are available through the Advocacy and Resource Center. Um, you can contact them at arc, a -R -C, at lorrainecc.edu or by calling 440-366-4ARC. That's 440-366-4272. Their offices are on the first floor of the library. So what kind of personal and social support services are, are available? Well, for starters, um, there is food and income assistance programs. And I know um, in pandemic times, they can be, these can be necessary for all kinds of people. There are utility assistance programs. There are childcare services, mental health, addiction, and personal counseling services, transportation. They can give you gas money if you, um, or like get cards for gas money if you need help getting to school. Um, housing assistance, legal services, and services for victims of sexual assault or domestic violence. Um, again, the contact information is arc at lorrainecc.edu or by calling 440-366-4ARC. 
Their offices are on the first floor of the library. You can also visit the web page, um, which is uh, www.lorrainecc.edu slash ARC. If you go to the web page, you can see that they've got their contact information and office hours. There's also a button you can click for um, online chat. You can schedule an appointment and they talk about all the services they have, emergency aid, help with technology, food assistance, Commodore, Commodore Career Closet, where you can get uh, clothing, nice clothing for a uh, job interview. Also, if you go over to, um, uh, so lorrainecc.edu slash support services, you'll see a broader list of services, including accessibility services, the care center, the children's learning center, in general, I encourage you to take advantage of all of the support the college has to offer. Okay, as I said before, this class has uh, both in-person and online sections. So um, if you are registered for the in-person section and you miss a class for whatever reason, you can do it online and there's no penalty. If you are registered for the online class and you want to come to the in-person class and do the material live and in concert, let me know. The material is broken up into 30 classrooms, classes corresponding to the 30 in-person classes. For the online version of each class, there's going to be uh, videos, readings, and exercises. Generally, just one of each, a video, a reading, and an exercise, but sometimes they get mixed up and they happen in different orders. For the in-person classes, the reading will be due at the start of class, and the exercise will typ typically be done in class. Um, and if there's any exception to that, I will let you know. So this is the main book we'll be reading this semester. It is Evicted by Matthew Desmond. Um, the book follows eight families, some with children and some without, as they go through the process of eviction. Uh, while he's doing that, he also follows their landlords. And there are two landlords, one who rents to the uh, black tenants and one who rents to the white tenants. And the author is interested in the eviction as a process where rich and poor meet. So this video here is from the author's website. It's justshelter.org, um, and this has resources and advocacy for people who are facing eviction. These movies are actually movies that he took while he was researching this book. He's a sociologist, and he uses both quantitative and qualitative methods. That is, he follows individuals around and he comes to understand their stories, but he also puts this in the background of some quantitative some statistics about housing and homelessness in the city that he's studying, which is Milwaukee, uh, which is actually not so different than the cities around here, Cleveland, Lorraine, Elyria. One of the things I like about this is that he views poverty as a relationship. Um, it's not just a state that an individual is in. It is a product of the relationship between ultimately rich and poor. And that's why in this book he actually studies both landlords and tenants to see how they both go through the process of eviction. This course, however, is actually a course in philosophy. So although we're going to be doing a lot of sociology, we're going to be hearing a lot of people's stories, ultimately the goals that I have for this course are philosophical. So the way I put my idea for this course together is that the course is going to give you tools to think about the ethics of complicated situations where every event has many causes and many different people have control over their causes and a largely different set of people feel the effects of the event. So the example of this kind of event is eviction, but this is actually sort of a ubiquitous problem in ethics. Um, ethics aren't typically just dilemmas that one individual faces, that, although that's often the way it's put, like here's a choice, what do you do? Um, there are complex interactions between many people, 
Um, some have more power than others, and some feel more of the brunt than others. Um, so, so ultimately, the concept that I'm interested in is the uh, one of the deepest philosophical concepts there is, justice. And a lot of what I'm trying to get at with this course can be captured by this quote from Brian Stevenson, the civil rights lawyer who works on death penalty cases. He says, in my work with the poor and incarcerated, I'm sorry, my work with the poor and incarcerated has persuaded me that the opposite of poverty is not wealth, the opposite of poverty is justice. So for a lot of this course, we're going to be trying to think about this idea from a philosophical perspective. Grade components. There are four components to your grade. There are regular exercises, there are tests, there's a midterm paper, and a final paper. The exercises are there to help you digest the material. And they're just going to be graded on completion. So these are going to be things like writing prompts. And I'll ask you things like, what are your associations with the word justice? And you just, you can say whatever your associations are, honestly. The point is to work through your own ideas. And then if you get it, if you do it, you get 100 points. And if you don't do it, you get zero points. Um, and the average of those 100s and those zeros is uh, your grade for that component of the course. Um, and so this is a chance to think through ideas for yourself, and it's a chance to get, um, uh, a, well, um, it's an easy way to get a lot of your grade in. The tests are multiple choice and short answer. They're going to be open book and open note. Um, so I've I, th I think that a lot of the test surveillance software that people use to uh, keep you from looking at your notes or that sort of thing during a test, it's just very intrusive, it's clunky. Um, it's a lot easier if you just look at, you're just able to look at your own notes. And so if you, I mean, if, you know, if you're taking notes on the book and you're keeping track of things and you go through that process of reading and taking notes, then you've done the education. Um, and so it's fine if you look at the notes. Um, you can also, uh, I don't recommend trying to Google things though. Um, a lot of what we'll be talking about in this course is specific to the context of this course, right? So even though there's not a lockdown browser, if you just Google up random information, you're not going to get um, something that is specific to what we're talking about here. So it really won't help you. Um, what will help you is keeping well-organized notes. All right, so there's a midterm paper and a final paper. The midterm paper uh, is going to be about 1,000 to 1,500 words, and it's going to be what we, what we call an application paper. You're going to take a concept in this course and apply it to a situation. And that could be a situation in the book or a situation maybe in your own life if you want to feel comfortable writing about your own life. Um, and uh, the grade comes from seeing how well you articulate the relationship between the concepts and the reality that you're describing. Um, the second paper is just like the first one. Um, in fact, it can be a modification of the first one. You can just um, change uh, the old paper, but you must have at least 1,000 new words. So you can't just move some commas around and call it a new draft. You have to really add material to it. So one thing to remember is that there is actually no penalties for late work here. I've got a timeline set up on the course um, where uh, that just matches the timeline for the in-person course. But uh, if you miss something, um, that's fine. The online section is there so that you can fall back and just do it when you have the time to do it. However, if you fall too far behind, we're going to need to talk. Okay, next steps. 
So class one does not have a reading for it because the in-person class is just coming to class for the first time. So there's just an in-class exercise for the in-person students and then uh, there's an online exercise for the um, online students. And it's an exercise where we brainstorm ideas about justice and try and get grounded in what our understanding of justice is going into this course. Um, then for class two, we can start reading the book. Um, and there are two more exercises and a video on the class two webpage. Um, quick note, you must do something in this class that shows up on the website within the first 14 days or you will be automatically dropped from the course. And submitting the first exercise is an easy way to do this. All right, thank you very much. And I'm really excited for this semester. I think we're all going to uh, learn a lot.